What's up guys, I'm the Angel. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be learning how to do a one-arm chin-up. But obviously I can't do a one-arm chin-up yet. So I brought a very special guest here today. Hi, uh, my name is Devin Kelly. I'm a movement and uh, mindfulness coach and practitioner. I've been based in China for five years. Now based here in Bali. I'm here to share some, whew, I'm out of breath. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine, keep going. I'm here to share some tips and progressions for you for the one arm chin up in case this is a movement goal that you're working toward. So where most people fall short in the one arm chin up is that they don't start initially with the foundation of being able to move their scapula in the right position. So I'm gonna go over some basic, um, some basic techniques yeah. for retracting and depressing the scapula. Mm -hmm. so I'll walk you through it first, okay. and then I'll have you do it and make corrections as necessary. Okay. So. This is depression. You see I'm moving my shoulders away from my ears. This is retraction. Where I'm pulling my shoulder blades toward each other on my back. So again, depression away from my ears and down toward the floor. Retraction pulling back and squeezing my shoulders together. I'm exaggerating this movement a little bit. So okay. are you intentionally making your lumbar arch? Yeah, retraction becomes easier when you arch your, when you arch your back, but we won't, we'll, we'll go over why you don't want to do that um, too much okay. as well. Okay, just start with depression. Yep, so you can see his shoulders move far down away from his ears and then into retraction. They'll engage these muscles in the mid back here and as if he's squeezing a coin. He's trying to pinch these together. Again, he's exaggerating the movement. You won't have to do it that much when you're actually doing the chin. Okay, can you just retract and not depress? Yeah, you see here how he's squeezing his shoulders backwards, but his shoulders are still elevated up toward his ears. That's a mistake, and he's not engaging his lats. So again, depress. See his lats turn on. Now, retract. There we go. If this is not manageable for maybe 20 seconds or so, then you can start to just think about hanging for a while. Switch arms. When the hang starts to feel comfortable, then you can start to do the same thing that I just did on two arms on one arm. Depress and retract. Depress and retract. So once you feel comfortable with the scapular engagement, which by the way, your elbows are not bending. This is straight arm scapular engagement. It's a big mistake that a lot of people make. They'll rely on their biceps um, to control the movement. Try to keep your arms straight. Then you'll start to think about bending your elbows and working toward a chin up. Obviously, if you can't, if you can't do a single chin up or a single pull up, then it's going to be hard to work toward a one arm chin up. So I recommend people work toward at least having one repetition of a pull up or chin up before they begin their progression, but only one is enough. Most coaches would probably disagree with that. It's not a common thing to say, but I'll explain why I'm saying that um, a little bit later. So Dan's gonna hop up there and um, demonstrate his chin up without any instruction from me. So just go ahead and do what you would normally do. Good, okay, okay come down. So some things that we're working about that were that his elbows were moving sort of in this lateral position, back toward his, back toward his glute mm, medius. Yeah, back toward his glute medius. And his, not, his back is not arching too much, but it's enough to get his lats engaged. So if he were rounded like this, can you demonstrate a rounded pull-up position? If he were rounded, yeah, you can, see, you can see how his pec takes over and his upper back is quite rounded. The lat is not as engaged in that way. Um, and if he overarches, the same thing happens. The lat shuts off. So can you go ahead and demonstrate an overarched one, like the perfect pull-up? Yep. It's a perfect. Yep. Arch a lot. Yeah. You can see his lat's not nearly as engaged. Okay. Cool. So what we're looking for in this one is some kind of happy medium. So this would be an example of too much rounding, initiating from the pec minor and the bicep, which would look something like this, with the elbows forward, and I'm rounding. Come up. This would be an example of too much arch. You can see my lats shut off and I'm using most of my, mostly my rhomboids, teres, etc, etc. This is right in the middle with maximum lat engagement. So my elbows are aiming toward my glute medius.
it's important that you um, engage in the right way or else it won't, your pull-ups and your chin-ups won't translate very well to the one-arm chin-up. So when you're at the point when you have successfully completed at least one rep of the chin-up and pull-ups with very good technique, proper lat engagement, good amount of scapular depression and retraction, then you can start to think about, okay, how do I start moving my weight onto one arm? Mm. The best progression and the simplest progression for that that I know of is using a simple mixed grip chin-up. Now you can do this on the rings or you can do this on the bar. The rings are an advantage here because you can alternate, right? Yeah. So on the bar, you'd have to stop, switch your grip, switch your grip on every rep or else one arm's gonna get tired and then you go to do your second set and it's, it's gonna be imbalanced. Yeah. The nice thing about the rings is they turn so you can just alternate like this back and forth. So now, obviously, if you only have one chin-up or one pull-up, it's going to be difficult to shift all of your weight onto one arm. But it's very important that you do so as much as possible. So even if you can only do one chin-up, you can still shift a little bit more weight onto one arm. For example, Dan's going to start on his right, and uh, that will help you to start to know what it feels like to have more weight on one arm to engage the scapula and start to break the elbow. So go ahead and um, turn. As you, as you shift your weight onto your right arm, begin to turn the ring, begin to supinate. Supinate your grip. Yep. Right. See how his arm went out there? It's not a bad thing, but especially for beginners, it's not ideal because if you have a lot of weight on the auxiliary shoulder, it can cause problems if you're internally rotating. So what I would suggest is try to keep the rings the same distance apart. Just turn and shift the weight onto one hand instead of looking to compensate by bringing the hand out. So same arm. Good. Now you see he went up kind of in the middle. Right? So this time he's going to go to the other arm and he's going to shift the weight first to one arm and then go up. Shift as much weight as possible, engage the scapula, good, he went to the same arm. That's better, good. The idea is that you want to be mimicking the one arm chin up as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that means if you watch the form of my one arm chin up in the beginning of the video, you're pulling mostly toward the center of your chest. If it's on the bar, it's a little bit different. You're, um, you have a pronated grip and you're pulling kind of to the opposite pec area, um, but you know, more or less, same thing. You want to be mimicking, you want to be mimicking the path as, as best you can. Better. Yep, you can see even in the middle there where his weak point was, his arm wanted to shoot out, right? That's something to notice. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be compensation patterns when you find a weak point in the pattern. So, for example, if I'm weak here, and I have a hard time breaking at the elbow, this movement, this part of the movement is weak for some people. For some people, it's here. Some people, it's at the top that's quite weak. So wherever you're weak, you'll start to see compensation patterns around that part of the movement. It's also a good thing to note because now that gives you cues as to which part of the movement you should be working on more. If you want to get the most out of this exercise, I suggest doing uh, a one to four tempo. Maybe you can add even a one second hold at the top. So again, it's shift the weight onto one arm, start to feel the opposite hand get light, this arm gets heavy. I break at the elbow by initiating the scapula first, break at the elbow, go up. This would be maybe a one second concentric. From this position, again, chin all the way to the top of the ring here. Then I can start to think about either pause at the top or four seconds down. So in real time, the rep would look something like this. One. Two, three, four. Rest. One. One, two, three, four. So you can use this tool, obviously, all the way up until you've got a one arm chin up because you can just put less and less weight on this hand. The downside is that's, that's kind of an advanced progression because it requires more body awareness. If you don't know what you're doing with your weight distribution, then it's not gonna help you. So. I want to talk about some progressions that would be considered more advanced mm -hmm. progressions that will help you to force yourself to put more weight on one arm mm -hmm. and also will help you to measure objectively how much weight, well, semi-objectively, how much weight you're actually putting on that arm. Um, but again, you may not even need to use these tools at all, especially if you can't do at least, you know, four solid reps each side with the mixed grip chin. There's not really much use in moving on to other progressions um, at that point. But when you can, and when you feel comfortable with very strict form with the switch grip chin, then it's okay to start moving on, and I wanna give you some ideas about how to do so. So the next progression I typically use uh, toward the one arm chin up is using the same strap 
as the ring that it's as the ring that's hanging. Why I do this instead of using the opposite strap is it mimics the pathway of the one arm chin up a little bit better. But it also requires a little bit more awareness so that you're not pull, pulling the strap out to the side like you would in like an archer chin up, for example. Um, so what you'll do is try to pull straight directly down on the strap instead of pulling out. Mm. And yeah, do your best to put as much weight on this arm as possible. This is going to be easier if you hold high with a full fist. This is going to be harder, 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 harder as you go down. Um, also, if you change your grip, if you hold it like this, like a lobster claw, that's going to be harder. This is harder, remove a finger, harder, harder, and obviously hardest. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've yeah. never tried this before. There it is. Yep, good. So as you can imagine, this would be very similar to actually like a rope climb or something like right, that. Yeah. Because it's that same line, which is why rope climbing tends to translate so well to one-arm chin-up. So a couple of things that you might want to keep in mind here. You could substitute, you could substitute a strap for a band, like an elastic band. The reason I don't favor that approach is because the elastic band is, well, it's elastic. So as you pull down on it, it has a rebound effect. So it's going to pull back up, and the thing is you can't control how much force it's going, to, it's going to rebound with. And you can't control at what point in the movement it's going to rebound. So as you pull down on it, it's going to help you at an unpredicted part of the movement. And we can't, we can't measure that. Right. Mm -hmm. Now if you wanted to do the same progression on a bar, you would simply take a fixed strap like this that is not elastic, and just loop it over the bar very close to your hand. Very simple. If you can't, if you can't find a strap like this, a fixed strap, you can use a t-shirt, you can tie two t-shirts together, whatever you need to do. Yeah. So already, these progressions can take you quite far. Um, if you can do multiple sets and reps using the same strap on the same ring, that's already quite an advanced progression, and probably you're already putting quite a bit of weight on your, on your one arm that you're using toward the chin-up. So, but if you're really close, if you're getting close to your one arm chin and you want that little extra something to help you to gauge more objectively how much weight you're putting on one arm, how close are you, to really toughen up the sets and reps, then you can use this progression. So what I've done here is just loop the basic yoga strap through a set of weights. You really, you can use anything. Probably anything that's gonna give you the least friction is the best. So if I were to use like a nylon rope, for example, a round nylon rope, that would give me even less friction because it's just gonna slide over the ring like nothing. So you would just loop the strap over one ring. This time, it's going to be on the opposite ring, so it requires you to have a little bit more awareness about how much weight you're actually putting on this strap. So you don't, again, you don't wanna pull the strap out to the side. You can do archers this way, it's not wrong but probably until you have a one-arm chin-up under lock, and you can actually do a one-arm chin-up, I don't recommend using archer, archer progression because typically people put too much weight on the shoulder because they, by definition, if you can't do a one-arm chin-up, you can't put all the weight on that arm. And he's just gonna do the same thing that he did with the mixed grip chin, but now there's a measurement here. If he pulls too hard, the weight's gonna go whoop, right? Okay, so if he starts up here, easier. If he starts down here, Harder, so he can choose which one he wants. I'll choose the easiest one. <laughs> Get up there. <laughs> Not today. Yeah. today. As you can see, as you can see, it starts to slide, right? And so this is four kilograms here. I've got two kilogram plates, two two kilogram plates. And um, if you can't manage a rep with four kilograms, I would recommend going back to the other progressions because this one is probably not in the cards for you at the moment. It's not gonna help you out as much as you would hope if you have to rely on that much counterweight. But I wanna talk about auxiliary exercises, um, especially auxiliary exercises for the bicep and the tricep, which will help to stabilize the elbow joint. One of the most common injuries that we see in one-arm chin-ups is people getting something called like golfers or tennis elbow, um, and they get, which is essentially just elbow tendonitis. It shows up as pain right around this area in the elbow. So we can mitigate the risk of that kind of injury by adding auxiliary movements like bicep curls and tricep extensions in a very specific way that's gonna help us to strengthen that area around the tendon. There are multiple types of bicep curls and I recommend using all of them. So as you're experimenting with these, you can use a lighter weight. Don't go for your max right away. Use something that you might be able to do like 10 or 15 reps with. So the first type of bicep curl and the most accessible one is obviously just standing. So we would stand with the weight by our side. 
And without moving the elbow forward and without compensating by leaning or moving the shoulder forward, I just bring the weight from straight arm position up. And again, I don't move the elbow forward. I keep the elbow in place and I squeeze my bicep as much as possible. Again, the shoulder's not moving, elbow's not moving. And then back down. Scott curls, also known as preacher curls, are a great way to strengthen the bicep in this end range position, which would, if you think about it, would translate to the one arm chin up in which position? The bottom position? Right, the very bottom position when the arm is locked and we're trying to engage with the scapula and then break at the elbow. That first break at the elbow is where we're gonna meet this strength here. So you'll hold the, you'll hold the weight on your bicep. Yep, you'll turn your chest pretty much square to the bench. You can even grab the bench with the other arm to stabilize yourself. And you wanna think about the same thing with your scapula. Pull back with your scapula, engage, retract, right? You don't wanna do it from a protracted or hunched position. Yeah, pull back, right? Then grip the, grip the weight hard. Don't grip it with your fingertips. Get a full grip on the fist and then try to break at the elbow. Right. So this one is much harder variation. It's gonna be harder to break at the elbow, especially if you really lock it out. So you don't need to use as much weight for this one as you probably would for standing or seated bicep curl. So again, he doesn't want the elbow to move. And he's gonna retract the scapula, engage the position, right? Keep it depressed as well. Yep, there we go. Then try to break the arm. Now this part, this is gonna be the hardest part. Now he's gonna to try to contract, 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 close this angle of the bicep as much as he can. And this is the hardest part of the position, so he wants to focus on this, maybe even at a pause. And then down. Right, one more time. Hold, contract, contract. That's gonna be the hardest part of the range. And then let it go. Cool. So you do all these curls with one arm, instead of just doing both, like this? Right, yeah. I usually just focus on one arm, and that helps me also to gauge which one feels weaker, which one feels stronger. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can kind of more accurately assess the weak points in my range that way. Gotcha. But it's not wrong to do it with two arms, if you prefer that. All of these can be done in multiple hand positions. So you can do it, for example, um, the way you just did it, with a supinated grip, or you can start to pronate. You can do it like this, as a hammer curl. You can also do it with a um, pronated grip and this is gonna be a different part of the range. I recommend, if you can, do all of them. Because what we're looking for is versatility here in our joint's capacity to generate force in all of these different positions. So obviously the bicep here is only part of the equation because it's only one action, right? But the antagonist muscle group of the bicep is what? Triceps. Triceps, right. So um, if we want to also stabilize the joint from the opposite direction with the opposite action, then we need to work on our triceps. But this is no longer a pulling movement, so we won't be actively depressing and retracting. We'll actually be doing the opposite. Well, we won't be, we won't be elevating, but we will be protracting as much as possible and trying to do the tricep extensions from this position. So I want to show you a bunch of variations of tricep extensions in case you're limited on resources or you just want variation. Um, number one, which is my favorite, is on the rings. The reason I like it so much is because there's so much potential for variation. Um, you can do it in different positions in terms of your hands in relationship to your torso. Here, 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 here. This is easier, this is harder. You can also do it at various heights. If you lift the rings up or you walk the rings forward, it's gonna be much easier because there's less weight on your hands. If you, um, if you go lower, it's obviously gonna be harder not only for your triceps, but to maintain your core position as well. So it's, it's two in one in that way as well. Okay, so you can see the rings here are at a slight angle, so that's gonna make it easier for Dan. If he were to walk his feet back, it would get harder, it's up to him. And then he'll enter a fully extended position in the hips. And so the position he's chosen right here, going right past his ear, is quite advanced, it's pretty hard. So if he wanted to make it easier, he would push more toward the top of the head. Right, exactly, like you would see in like the skull crushers, but on your back, you see bodybuilders do this kind of exercise as well. So this is the reclined dumbbell variation of the tricep press. And again, same positions apply. Here is harder, here is easier. So this is easier. Yep. Maybe here is the most you want to go. Yeah. Great, that's it. So that was the end of the progressions, but I have a couple questions in mind I want to ask. The first one is, does weighted pull-ups help with achieving the one-arm pull-up or one-arm chin-up? Right, yeah, I think this is a question a lot of people have. 
weighted pull-ups can be quite useful, mm -hmm. but it depends. Again, it depends on how much awareness you have when you're doing them, and if you're doing them in a way that translates very well to the one-arm chin-up. So again, proper scapular position is important, um, where you're directing your elbows, how much you're engaging your lats. Um, you can also do weighted chin-up variations, uh, for example, with the mixed grip chin-up. Mm -hmm. I found that to be very effective for some people, especially if you psychologically get burnt out on just trying to do more weight on one arm. Uh, the, the weighted pull-ups or weighted chin-ups can be a way to get that feeling of having more weight all the way up consistently um, and just you know getting that hypertrophy in or um, having the feeling of, of, of struggle all the way through the entire rep. For some people it works better, some people not so much, but I would say that if, if you're asking if the um, if you're asking if weighted pull-ups or chin-ups are absolutely necessary to achieve the one-arm chin, I would say no. Mm. You can definitely achieve the one-arm chin in a reasonable amount of time and maybe even faster if you just focus on the variations that I suggested today. The second question, I forgot, what was it? Is, is about, <laughs> is, you said intensity versus volume oh, geez, or something? Yeah. There you go, okay. Yeah. So the second question I had in mind was, should I do a rep scheme? So should I use lesser reps for higher intensity or higher reps for less intensity. Right, so this is a question that gets really complicated really fast if we're not careful. So I'll simplify it as best I can. Probably the best way to do it is to choose one... <laughs> there, is one there is one sort of protocol that I could recommend that would be, that would produce consistent, safe, and sustainable results over a long period of time. You can think about percentages. You can think about doing 70 to 80% of your total volume somewhere in the hypertrophy range. So that would be like eight, maybe eight to 12 reps, something like that. Um, and then the rest of that percentage would be in the strength range, anywhere from like three to five reps. That's a pretty good balance. Um, if you start to go above that and you go like 50-50 of your volume, like strength to hypertrophy, mm. then you start to run the risk of, of injuries. Intermediate to beginner, I would highly recommend sticking strictly to that sort of like 80 to 85 percent even hypertrophy, and like you know, 10 to 5, maybe even 10 to 15 percent um, in the strength range. So that, that's just a rough variable that you can, or a rough ratio that you can use in terms of thinking about sustainable progressions. Yeah. So if I were to add a couple of things here, uh, I would highly suggest, uh, especially if you're more beginner or to intermediate, to, to not to train too much. Uh, I learned it in the hard way, so uh, maybe keep it with well, once or twice a week. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would say twice a week is probably enough to see yeah. really, really strong results. If you want to really push it, three to four times maximum, but probably, probably twice a week is enough, especially if you're just kind of at a beginner intermediate level. Yeah. Hey guys, so I think that's it for today's tutorial. That was very helpful. So thanks so much for being in my channel. I really appreciate pleasure, it. Man. Yeah, that was really fun. And um, uh, like I said, uh, he's quite popular and then he's quite well known in the Instagram community as well so I'll put his uh, link in the description box below to check him out he puts a lot of his trainings and his philosophies and principles I look forward to training with you more and then yeah I'll let you know when I get my one arm chin yeah man yeah. excited to see your progress yeah, this year probably maybe maybe this year hopefully yep all right thanks man yeah man appreciate it pleasure